to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. In this episode, we show how we install our electrical service. We're using a small residential electrical panel, and as with a lot of the components you'll see, it's massively oversized for what we're actually going to need. Uh, my electrician mentality is just to overbuild everything so we're never looking for power and don't have the capacity for it. So it's actually good for 125 amps and we're probably only going to use about 30, but we're going to bring in 30 at 240 volts, which this panel can accept, uh, both legs of the system. A lot of tiny houses I've seen bring in just the one leg for 120 volts, uh, which keeps things simple because you can just connect a regular type of extension cord to power the whole system. Um, obviously simplicity is not a concern for me, uh, so we're going to go for the 240 and the advantages of that are that we can separate some of the heavier loads that you'll see um, that we have in the kitchen uh, and also it basically allows us to double the amount of power that we bring in with a similar size of extension cord. So the cable that we're going to use to feed the system is the same stuff that you'd use for a range in like a house's kitchen. It's number eight three wire and it's good for 50 amps, um, obviously nowhere near the 125 amps we could put into this panel. And that will be the limiting factor um, of how much power we can bring into the system. Obviously we can never bring in more than what the cable can uh, pump through. Uh, but even the 50 amps, uh, it is at 240 volts, so that's equivalent to 100 amps at 120 volts. So if you think of an extension cord is good for just over 10 amps, this is practically 10 times that, so it's still way more than we're ever going to need. Um, and the important thing here is that because it's a three wire, uh, that extra wire is what's going to allow us to bring in the other leg and get that 240 volts into the system. The type of cable is suitable for permanent installation inside a wall, but you wouldn't run this outside. So we're just using it to connect from the panel to a box that's going to be affixed to the underside of the flange that we can then access later and connect to a proper outdoor uh, type of cable. This is eventually going to be the crazy control center of the house, and we're going to want to measure how much power we're using. So I've got this extra box here that's going to have the cable run through it before it gets to the panel. And that's so that we could connect sensors to read our power usage in here without ever having to mess around inside the panel. I'm a big fan of what I refer to as two screw connectors, which are just these metal connectors that you can cinch down and then they're on there and you can feed the cable through and get it connected to whatever you're working on. And also I've clipped off the excess uh, screw length here so that it can uh, fit through this massive deep hole without getting caught on anything. So I'm going to poke this through and we'll go outside and I'll show you how we're going to terminate this. That's really graceful. We were lucky that these standard PVC boxes are the exact right width to fit against um, the exposed part of the flange here. And so I've already got my whole drill that's going to accept the electrical uh, connector through there. And then this weather stripping is so that when I tighten it down, obviously this isn't an opening into the, the box. It's got a gasketed cover as well, so it's going to be completely weather tight. And then these little mounting flanges, I've actually drilled through the trailer's flange all the way through the metal. And I'm just going to pass a wood screw through into the wood inside to actually suck the box in tight. So I'm just going to get my cable that I've already prepared. Uh, in here and tightened in and then I'll mount the box up. And I'm just tucking the wires in and eventually we're going to connect to them with these enormous morettes. So I'm just capping off the ends here and then folding it away. And then uh, the cover has this gasket on it, so that's going to fit over like so and keep it nice and dry in there. And then you can see that eventually, probably come in this side with uh, a proper outdoor cable that will connect from the house in here connect to those wires which will then feed the panel. 
All right, with the other end terminated, uh, we're just gonna bring it up into this box now. And you can see I managed to get a sleeve of that foamy wraparound insulation from the plumbing to, uh, I got that in a hole to fill in some of the extra space in there. So I just need to make sure I'm gonna have enough length here and cut this off. Should have proper bigger cutters for this, but get her done. There we go. I have these, um, these are actually straps for uh, armored cabling. And there are staples for the size, but these actually fit really nice and snug, better than the staples in my opinion. So I'm gonna use these to secure it up the, uh, the wall here. Also these protection plates are just little flat pieces of metal to uh, protect against a nail or a screw going through and damaging uh, the wire. People use them for uh, plumbing and gas and everything as well. Just whenever anything is uh, close to the surface of some framing, you can throw these on to make sure that it's safe. All right, I got it uh, strapped uh, frequently, nice and secure, uh, within a foot of where it enters. You do that everywhere. And uh, it's all in there, it just needs to be tightened down. Uh, the connector needs to be tightened down, so I'm gonna pass this lock ring over onto the threads and then uh, tighten it down if I can get it on there. And then to tighten this down, you just catch the uh, one of the little nubs of the ring with a screwdriver and then and then bash it around clockwise to uh, tighten it down. And then that's nice and secure. This is especially important for the feeder, but can apply to anything. Um, it's always good to leave enough length on the cable to make sure you can get anywhere inside the panel. You wouldn't want to cut it this short and then find out that you're stretching it to try to reach the neutral bus or to a breaker on the other side or whatever. So it's a pro tip right there. Obviously these are important wires because they're feeding the whole house. Um, but whenever you're twisting together either stranded wires or a whole bunch of little wires, it's good to kind of feather feather the twist together. Let it, let it splay out like that and then re-twist it so you've got a fairly even and solid um, connection all the way down. And I like to have it pretty long when I work with it and then snip off the end probably about that much and then make sure that the tip is still tight. And then you can put the uh, moret on there and you can really feel it engaging in down in the, uh, the tip. And then really crank it on until you start seeing feeling the actual wire twisting and then you know that it's bottomed out in there and then that's a nice strong connection. All right I got it connected and neatly tucked away in there so we can get at that at a later date and to close it up. If you want to see some of our previous videos click on the preview tiles and subscribe if you want to follow our progress. You can also visit our website here.